Fala gurizada, tudo certo galera, voltamos aqui com mais um vídeo de Enderal Galera, modificação para Elder Scroll 5 Skyrim no PC E nós estamos aqui fazendo a missão Ou nenhuma missão galera, a gente concluiu no vídeo anterior, olha só Parte de alguma coisa significativa, nós estávamos no meio da floresta A gente viajou para uma cela imaginária, enfim, teve uns puzzles para resolver Na verdade um puzzle só e agora a gente acordou aqui, nessa cama, nesse lugar, que eu não faço ideia do que seja. E vamos lá, vamos continuando, tem alguém sentado ali, é isso? Tem um cara meio morto ali, cara, e sei lá. Olha quem está ali. Ai... Vocês não reconhecem, galera, mas é o Jasper. Oh, hey. Good to see you awake. How are you feeling? Good question. The room was empty when I came here. Actually, that's quite weird now that you mention it. The entire temple seemed kind of deserted. But eh, probably a ceremony or something like that. Now, tell me, how are you holding up? I heard this trial's quite the feat. Apparently, some of the novices never wake up again. In the temple, the curarium, to be precise. You were brought here when you were traveling with that Ixen guy. I think the others are already awake, but I didn't want to leave you here, so I thought I'd just stay. I mean, hey, you are a keeper of the first sigil now, aren't you? I believe congratulations are in order. Don't mention it. Bad though that this keeperness won't get you anywhere. Do you know why? Because you're pathetic. Simply pathetic. I said you are pathetic. At first we believed it would be more exciting this time. <laughs> But now that we've seen the new prophet, our hopes are gone. You're a joke. A nobody who let his only friend kick the bucket. As if you'd ever accept that. You humans are always so damn persistent, aren't you? Why? Why can't you just let go? Because in the end, you are powerless, just as all those before you. And you, prophetess, you are the biggest joke of all. You are nothing but an urchin. A weakling. What? And a murderer. What? And that is why you will burn all of you. The oh, cleansing will no happen, and there's, and there's nothing, nothing you can do to stop it. <laughs> is that so? Such presumption from a fish who thinks his time to be the world. The world is an interplay of cause and effect, and the only logical consequence of your existence is annihilation. That's the way it was, and that's the way it's going to be. But enough of the banter, Urchin. We wanted to meet you, and so we did, even though the result is rather sobering. Now wake up! Keep on stumbling through the mist. Que bizarro, galera. Acho que faz parte ainda da, side, da, da quest anterior. Cara, que bizarro, velho. Ah, lá vamos nós de novo. Temos mais uma personagem ali. Hum, ele tá assim, olha só. O jeito que ele tá ali, galera. Olha só. Tá bem, vamos falar com essa aqui. Thank Malthus. I was starting to think I was the only one. How are you? You look exhausted. Of course, sorry. That remark was a little redundant. But it's good to see the Grand Master was right after all. I woke up just a few hours earlier, and he was here in the meantime. He didn't doubt for a single second that you would make it. But I suppose mutual congratulations are in order. 
We made it. We passed the trial. Almost, yes. All that is left to do is to take the oath, and then Grandmaster Aranthiel will exalt us to the Keepers of the First Sigil. Speaking of whom, he also told me some things while you were asleep. About the Pyreans, about these dreams, and of course, about this... cycle. <sighs> this is so bizarre, really. At first we're told out of nowhere that the gods have died, and now humanity is on the brink of extinction. This is a lot to take in. Hard to say. I never had those dreams the Grandmaster talked about, even though I'm magically gifted. But then again, I always had the feeling that the Red Madness was more than an ordinary disease. <sighs> well, I suppose all of this explains a lot. At least now I can understand why the Grandmaster was willing to break all the traditions of the Order just to get you exalted to be a Keeper. According to him, most of our battle against the Cycle will stand or fall with you. Yes, I believe that. It's a great responsibility you've been given. And as impressive as your skills are, I would not want to change places with you. Well, as I said, we both have to take the Holy Oath. You should talk to the Grandmaster as soon as you're ready. He's waiting for you in the Emporium. Right. Dunwar. The Apothecary examined him about an hour ago, and it doesn't look good. It's likely that he'll never wake up again. He was... impulsive, yes. But to some extent, I can understand why he was the way he was. You know, Dunwar was one of those people who tried to gild their insecurity with boastful behavior. The reality is that he was the last of his bloodline, and his faith in the path and his destiny as a keeper were all that he had left. And who knows, maybe he would have been a great help to the Order with the right guidance. But I guess Master Bartar's revelation was just too much for him. It's hard to be told that everything you've lived for was a lie. Well, maybe I just don't show it as much. But yes, in a way, you're probably right. I suppose that's mainly due to the fact that to me, as opposed to Dunwar, the Order always stood for an idea. And an idea doesn't die with the one who first thought of it. Funny that the Grandmaster said nearly the same thing during the Exaltation. Dunmore would have considered it blasphemy. Mm. I knew the question would come eventually. I suppose the answer depends on whether you're in the mood for some gloomy talk. Sooner or later, you'll hear it from someone else anyway, so... Why not from me first? As you wish. I... <sighs> Where should I start? Maybe with the fact that I don't remember anything that happened before my sixth winter. I don't know where I was born, and I never got to know my parents. I wish I knew. What? What I do know, though, is that the first memory I have is of waking up in the middle of some village. It was dark, and I felt dizzy and, I don't know, empty? That's probably the best way to describe it. I eventually found the strength to get up and look around, and, well, that's when I realized what was actually going on around me. The entire village. It had been destroyed. There were corpses everywhere. Men, women, children. And the houses had been crushed as if some mad god had rampaged through the streets there. And it had all just happened hours before because the destruction was still fresh. Whatever it was, I didn't have much time to think about it. As soon as I got up, I saw three riders coming through the smoke. One of them got off his horse 
ran towards one of the corpses and started screaming something in my direction. Then I felt a blow on the back of my head and I lost consciousness. By the name of the sun, it's... It's strange to talk about it like this. It's been so long, but the memory feels as if it had happened yesterday. Well, it turned out the riders were hunters who had come from that village. They must have observed the... whatever it was from the distance, and ridden back to the village. At least I think that's how it went. I guess I'll never find out. The reason they thought I was somehow involved is that the village priest found me a couple of days before it happened near a shrine in the wilderness. Apparently, I was wearing torn clothing, and no matter what the apothecary tried, he couldn't wake me up from my comatose sleep. And it seems that made the writers think I was some kind of witch child, or unholy beast, whichever you prefer. For you, maybe. For them, as simple people, it was probably the best explanation they had. And think about it, it's not that far off. A motherless child who neither talks nor breathes steadily is found abandoned on the roadside and has a strange mark on her face. They leave to go hunting, and when they come back, they find their village in ruins with that foundling child being the only survivor. You have to admit, it's not that much of a stretch even if those men hadn't been superstitious farmers. Probably. Truth be told, I try not to think about it too much. And actually, it doesn't matter, because I somehow managed to get away before they could do anything. I even made it to Ark all by myself, which didn't turn out to be much of an improvement in the end, because I was pathless. Yes. Thinking about it now, I actually wonder how I made it through my time down there. But maybe that's one of the advantages of being a child. You don't think. You just act. Still, the winters down there were cruel. And if Master Tyrus hadn't found and taken care of me, I probably wouldn't have made it through my second year. Yes, otherwise I would not be here. Yep. He saw me, and he knew what he had to do, is how he put it. Of course, the Order wasn't too happy about a pathless child in the Scuola, just as some aren't happy about you being here. But Tyrus was a highly regarded man, and that's why they let it slide. It does, yes. But then, he had lost both his wife and daughter five years before he found me, so maybe I was some kind of substitute. I don't know. But in the end, it doesn't matter. I owe him everything. He was... a good man, and that's all that matters. That's right, we do, but we are both still pathless, and that disqualifies us according to the Holy Verses. I guess now you understand why I was never as connected to Malthus's teaching as Dunmore was. To some of the Keepers, I am still an outcast. And no matter what I do, I always will be. Yes, and now I'm here. <sighs> well, here we've reached the end of my impressive tale. I hope you liked it. Gone. He was very old, and there was nothing anyone could do about it. But I'd, I'd prefer not to talk about it, if you don't mind. No, I guess I'm not. <laughs> he does, yes, and he's not alone in his opinion. One of those hunters recognized me in the market my first year as a novice, and you can imagine that it was easy pickings for those who were already against my presence in the Order. From then on, they added names to the derogatory stairs. Demon child, witch, whatever they could come up with. Yes, maybe. You know what's funny? To some extent, 
I'm glad to be who I am. That way, people just leave me alone, and that gives me more time to focus on what's important, on my goals. Several, but I'd say that's enough of the gloomy stories, don't you think? There will be plenty of time for chatter in the future. Maybe. To be... Yes. All of the Dalmordans fell victim to the Great Flesh Maggot Plague of 8215. Actually, it was almost sad to see him running around and boasting about his nobility, though everyone knew that without the help of the Order, he would have probably ended up living in a shack in the Undercity. If you can call that living. You should. It's already late, but if you want, I can show you the most important places in the temple before you go to the Emporium. What do you think? Eh, that will be nice. Good. Then get your gear from the chest by your bed and we'll go. No, it's so fun. You should reclaim your gear before we leave. Caramba, galera, assim, ó, enquanto a gente conversava com ela, a gente comes now Kalia Bear, a gente fez um monte de perguntas, ela respondeu um monte de perguntas e agora vamos continuar o Part of Something Meaningful, Part 3, galera, parte 3, velho, é muito longa essa quest, olha o cara dormindo aqui forever. Bom, enfim, eu vou ficando por aqui, caras. O vídeo ficou um pouco longo, um vídeo pesado, cheio de explicação da história, coisa e tal, né? Enfim, vou ter que rever o vídeo, reler tudo para entrar no clima da história, mas enfim, galera, vou ficando por aqui. Deixa um like aí no vídeo, comentários, enfim, a gente vai continuando até o próximo. Até mais.